Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll take a look at a quick and easy way to adjust lighting using Photoshop. So you may have a photograph or digital artwork that you want to uh, improve the lighting and contrast on, and you could do this in a digital painting program like Corel Painter, but it doesn't work as well as it does in Photoshop. Photoshop is just a way better program for that sort of thing. So if you're using uh, version CS6 or uh, CS5, CS4, CS3, and I think even CS2 has this uh, feature down at the bottom of the layers palette for creating adjustment layers. So in your layers palette, uh, you'll click on your uh, little icon here. It looks kind of like a yin yang. And what this will do is this will add a non-destructive effect. And what a non-destructive effect does is it will let you apply uh, an adjustment to the image without permanently altering the image unless you save it. So to improve lighting in a photo, uh, the easiest way to do it is to select levels. You might think you want to use brightness and contrast, but that's not the case. You want to use levels. And levels gives you this little levels dialog here, and you get this thing that's called a histogram. A histogram is a representation of all of the light and dark areas in your artwork. On the left side, this is the darkest. This is the absolute blackest colors in your uh, image. On the right, this is the absolute lightest. And in the middle, this is your midtone. So what this chart's showing right now is there's a lot of black because this uh, peak here on this chart goes all the way to the top and it's getting clipped off. So that's showing that there's a lot more black than needs to be here. There's relatively no light areas uh, in this particular piece. Now, if we had a piece that was more white, like a daylight scene, the uh, histogram would probably look the other way. It would be flipped. So what we want to do is we want to play around with these sliders. If you drag these sliders left or right, then you can adjust the mid-tones, which are all of the middle colors. Or you can adjust the black, which is all of the dark values. You can make them blacker. Or you can adjust the lights. Now, the problem is going to be that you'll get this clipping. You'll see if I pull the white up, I start to lose all of this detail. You can't even see the lightning bolt in her hand anymore. So you want to watch out because when you move these points here, uh, your white point, when you move your white point in and your black point in, you're discarding information. You're turning something that was uh, close to white into white. So everything that was light is getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So you start to just lose information. So you have to watch out for that. So typically, um, I don't really move these two endpoints too much. I just play around with the middle to get the midtones the way I want them to be. It really depends on the piece. Uh, if you want to just go ahead and use auto, you can try it. You can click this auto button. Uh, the only issue is that sometimes it works and sometimes sometimes it doesn't. But I would say 80 or 90 percent of the time you can trust the auto setting to uh, automatically correct the color and contrast for you. And in this case, I think it did a pretty good job. And by adding a live effect in our layers palette, we get this uh, little dialog here that shows us that we have a effect on a layer. So this effect is essentially on its own layer and we can turn off the visibility of that effect. So it's not permanently applied, it's just kind of inserted into a chain here and it will affect everything below it. So that level's worked pretty good. Let's look at another technique. I'm just gonna hide this for a second. Another way that you can improve the lighting and contrast is to use uh, a different type of effect. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a live effect version of it, so we'll, we'll have to apply it uh, through the adjustments menu and that will permanently apply it to the layer. So the workaround for that is we want to duplicate this layer so that we have a duplicate and we can make adjustments to that duplicate and the adjustments will be on their own layer. So the easiest way I find to do that, if you just have a, a background layer here as your canvas, we'll do a control A to select all, 
and then we'll do a copy, which is edit, copy, and control V, which is edit, paste. You could also do paste in place if for some reason your duplicate isn't pasting uh, where you copied it from. But now we have this duplicate here, and we can apply effect, an effect to it. So we will go to image, adjustments, and there's a lot of our adjustments here that we can make. And we'll go to shadows and highlights. If you're not seeing any of these extra settings here in your shadows and highlights, you need to check this show more options dialog box. Now shadows and highlights works really, really well to fine tune all of the shadows and highlights in your piece. And you can see what that did just by turning it on. It made everything really pop out. I can increase uh, the setting for the amount of shadows. So what that's going to do is that's going to lighten the shadows. So this top dialog is controlling, it's essentially uh, making your shadows lighter and your highlights are making your highlights darker. So it kind of works the opposite here. You're getting less shadows by turning this value up. And this works a little bit better to not discard as much information and not make such extreme changes to your piece, but um, it isn't always the answer. You don't want to go too extreme. Generally, I only have to mess with shadows, especially if it's a dark piece. If it's a mostly light piece, you'll probably want to mess with the highlights more, but typically I don't really have to mess with the highlights too much. You can see I get a little bit of a different result there on the glowing from the lightning bolts, but I think I like it how it is. I don't have any problem with the light area because that isn't the issue in this piece. But really I just kind of start with these slider bars, move them left and right until I get a setting that I like. There isn't really any magic number here that I can give you because these values depend on the piece that you're working with. So really I kind of have to just kind of turn them back and forth to calibrate it and get it looking the way you want it to. Um, typically I don't mess with color correction but occasionally I do mess with the mid-tone contrast. This is a fun thing to play with. If you turn it all the way up, you get this really contrasty effect, which could be really cool. And if you turn it down, you get less contrast. That's not such a cool effect. But uh, you don't want to do this too much because you're kind of throwing away some of your mid-tones. So you're turning what was a lot of those middle colors into either black or either white. You're kind of polarizing the color, uh, which could be cool, but it might not look so hot if you do it too much. So I'll do a little bit, see how that looks. Then we'll go to OK to apply this effect. Now this was applied to this layer here. So I'll just call it Shadows HL so that you know what the layer is. And if we turn it off temporarily, you can see the difference that it made. And we can also control the intensity of this effect now, and we can back it down a little bit, make it a little less intense by changing the opacity of this layer. The layer that this effect is on is blending with the original layer underneath. So the majority of the time that I add this shadows highlights effect, I almost always reduce it by uh, a little bit, 10, 20, 30% somewhere in there because we kind of have a habit of overdoing these effects. Um, so subtle is always better than extreme in most cases. But you can see the before and after that made a huge difference. Now you can use this in tandem with the levels, but you want to kind of be careful because they both essentially do the same thing. So you don't want to wreck your image. I'll turn the levels back on. You can see it's starting to wash it out. So I'm going to reduce the midpoint a little bit. You can see again that helps overall and now the lighting is greatly improved. If we want to see a before, this is before and this is after. So it really fixed the lighting. Now we'll look at a, a couple other scenarios. This is a picture I took of my friend who was painting on my uh, digital painting setup here. And I got a couple different pictures. In one, uh, the screen was too dark, and in the other, it was too light. 
So basically the same picture, one is lighter, one is darker. Now you might have this happen when you have a backlight, if you have your camera pointed at a lamp or a uh, bright sky and someone's in the foreground, you might get this problem. So I'll show you how to fix both of these. So let's go ahead and let's start with the one that's too dark, since we kind of know how to fix that already. So on the one that's too dark, we will add a levels, adjustment layer. We'll try auto, see what we get. That helped a little bit. Now it seems to be trying to correct it for the screen. That's okay. Let's see if we can get it to get some of this to show up. So that's a little bit better, but it's not gonna be perfect. Problem is sometimes if you just don't have a good photo to begin with, and I took this on my iPad, so it's not by any means good photo quality, you're gonna have a heck of a time fixing this uh, fixing the lighting and everything. The, the reason why that is is because if the picture came out too dark your camera didn't capture any of that extra information. Photoshop can try to guess and try to add it in but it doesn't have any idea um, what you know what all this detail is if it did if the camera didn't capture it. So I have my levels set here. I don't like how it lightened the screen so what we will do is we will use the little mask feature and the mask will let us uh, conceal some of this effect. So I'm going to click on the mask and then I'm using uh, a tablet, a drawing tablet to do this, but you could use your mouse. It would be much easier with a tablet, so if you have one I recommend that you use it. And I'm going to paint with a br paint brush. I'm using uh, one of these soft edge brushes and my opacity is set to 100, but I'm going to change it to 30 and we'll paint with black into the mask. So we know that our mask is selected, so we clicked on it. If we paint on our mask with black, we will conceal some of that effect. Now it's kind of subtle. We'll have to do it before and after to really see what this is doing. But we've concealed uh, some of that effect. And if we disable the layer mask temporarily, you can see that it was much brighter with it enabled. It tamed it a little bit. We'll change the opacity of this layer to kind of play with the effect. So that improved the lighting, definitely. If we do it before and after, it's not perfect, but again, garbage in, garbage out. If your photo's not good, there's nothing you can really do to make it perfect. And adding these effects will bring out some details that you might not have even noticed were there. All these little areas and things and these little white specks, I don't even know what these are. These are just, I guess, individual little photons or dust or something, who knows. Let's look at our other example where our screen is too light. So there's a couple of different ways that we can fix this. I think that our foreground is fine, we just need to fix the TV screen here. So we'll make a layer go to levels, try auto, see what we get, didn't seem to do anything, so we will adjust some things around here, try to see what we can get, slightly better, and then we'll click in the mask of this effect here, and we'll use our paintbrush again with black to conceal some of this effect. So I'm painting over this foreground area and I'm erasing that levels adjustment from that area. I'm going to go ahead and just set my opacity up to 100. There we go. Now we're getting a better example of that. If you look in my layer mask here, this is the mask that's been created. So this black area you can think of as not having any of this levels effect applied. The levels is only getting applied to this little white chunk here, which is just the area around the screen. So that kind of fixed it a little bit. Uh, there's another thing that we can try. Uh, we can hide this levels adjustment for a minute. We'll try another method here for fixing this washed out screen. Let's duplicate this layer. And another way that you can duplicate the layer is to right click on it 
in the layers palette and go to duplicate layer. And let's set our blend mode to multiply. Now that helped a little bit to uh, make some of the dark areas darker and reduce some of the lights. See whether or not it did a better job in levels. I think it's actually just about the same. Well, that gives you an idea of what you can do for that too. And it's the same thing if you're adding a layer here. You can add a mask to that as well by clicking down here in the layers palette to add a layer mask. Click inside your mask. Paint with black with your airbrush. Painting in my mask and I'm concealing that multiply layer that I added. This layer here, which was the multiply, blend mode, now there's a mask. If you look here in, in the layer mask, that's what we have. We have this concealed black area. So typically you're going to have better results uh, playing around with these levels and trying to, trying to lighten if you're working with a really big, really nice quality photo. If you're working with something that you took on your camera phone or your iPad, you're going to get a lot of this little speckly artifacting and things. It's not going to look so great, but it does really help improve uh, the photo quite a bit. If you wanted to, you could even, uh, if you had two pictures like this, you could even combine the two. You could cut the screen out of one and paste it into the other and try to match them too. That's something that you could try. Um, a lot of cameras have exposure bracketing, which will allow you to take several pictures of the same image really fast, each one being uh, more exposed or less exposed than the next, and then you could combine those in layers in Photoshop and use these masks to erase different parts of the image. So that's another good way to compensate for poor lighting, especially if you have weird backlight. So I hope that was helpful and it makes it easier for you to fix the lighting in your artwork and in your photographs. If you found this information useful, take a quick second to like this video on YouTube or share it on Facebook and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.